Now, members, we'll uh, proceed to take leaders' questions under Standing Order 36. I call on Deputy Mary Lou Macdonald, please. Uh, Minister, the ESRI published its quarterly report, as you know, this morning, and it makes for a very alarming reading. They say that inflation could peak at 8.5% this summer before averaging out at 6.7% for the year as a whole. And this, as you know, is the highest annual rate of inflation since 1984. Inflationary pressures which were already building have escalated further due to Russia's uh, criminal invasion of Ukraine. And we are now presented with a very serious situation for workers and for families as households struggle just to keep their head above water and now face a prolonged cost of living crisis because, as you know, everything is going up and even now the very basics are pushed beyond the reach of many ordinary people. So our airwaves are now filled with people sharing their stories of how incredibly difficult it is just to make ends meet. Bar people can barely afford to light and heat their homes. And we now need to talk about food, Minister, because the soaring cost of energy and fuel, problems with supply chains, and the impact of this uh, criminal war <coughs> means that the price of groceries is going through the roof. So families now, in real terms, are stretched to put food on the table and money just doesn't go far when it comes to the weekly shop. People are down to the bare essentials and they have very little left at the end of the week and I know that they will be very worried, very alarmed hearing the news this morning. The ESRI is projecting strong economic growth and a budget surplus this year. That's the good news. So the government has elbow room in the public finances to intervene and cushion people from the sharpest impact of this crisis. So we now must ensure that workers, families, small businesses come through this crisis in one piece. We have to make sure especially that people on low and fixed incomes have enough to live on. So. Minister, government can't stand idly by while people are pushed into poverty. You're not observers or commentators on people's hardship. Your job, as you know, is to respond with speed, with urgency, to the extraordinary difficulties that households now face. Your ministerial colleague, Pascal Donoghue, has said, however, that the government has no plan to intervene with cost of living supports until October's budgets. He said, and let me quote, I can be really clear that we are not considering any further steps. Do you agree with Minister Donoghue's position? Because October is seven months away, Minister, and people are trying to stay afloat now. They can't wait that long for government to implement measures that will bring the cost of living down. Toshe Gyaltek Turj Ganiya Sarai Gamegan Rota Bulska in Orja Onijeg Okto Kahar. Ni Fajer Le Hibrahagas Le Chauli Dul Tridn in Yarkem Kushtis Varak Tola Sho. Ton Kumas Aragadis Eganriel Tus De La Lesh. So Kahi Tu Ganivu Anish. Now I accept that you can't do everything, Minister. There's no expectation of that on you or government. But we know and you must do more. You have to cut the cost of energy and fuel. You will need to go further than that, but you need to start there, I believe. And I asked the Taunish the yesterday, and I'm asking you again today, will you engage with the EU Commission to remove VAT from energy bills initially for three months, and will you remove excise from home heating oil? These are Thank two you, initial actions that government can take to give workers and families the break and the initial breathing room that they now desperately Thank you very need. Much. Deputy Minister Michael McGrath. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Deputy MacDonald, for raising the issue of inflation and the cost of living pressures that we acknowledge as a government that people are facing at this time. And it was highlighted further, of course, by the ESRI report uh, that you mentioned in your introductory remarks. I think people will accept that this is a global phenomenon. Uh, all developed economies in the world are now experiencing a high level of inflation. Our neighbours in the UK, the latest figure is 6.2%. In the United States, it is just under 8%. So these are 
uh, unprecedented times and the level of inflation that we are witnessing and that people are having to deal with in their day-to-day -day lives uh, is without parallel uh, in recent modern history. And that is why the government is not standing idly by. The government is not an observer or a commentator. You are correct. The government has already taken very significant steps uh, in an effort to alleviate the burden uh, that people are undoubtedly facing at, the at this time. And of course that started with the budget back in October with a package of over a billion euro in relation to uh, income tax reductions, including for people on low and middle incomes, and also welfare increases, both increases in core social welfare weekly rates, but also targeted measures, anti-poverty measures, such as the living alone allowance, the qualified uh, child dependent allowance, changes to the working family payment, and so on. But it is because of what has happened since that we recognise that we had to go further and the government has responded outside of the normal budgetary calendar uh, with two further significant interventions uh, in recent weeks. Uh, back in February, as you know, we had a package of over a half a billion euro, uh, including the energy credit of 200 euro uh, for every household, which will be applied to electricity accounts in the next number of weeks. The fuel allowance lump sum of 125 euro for up to 400,000 households, along with a range of other measures. Uh, the reduction in the drugs payment scheme threshold to 80 euro, uh, the front loading of the budgetary changes in the working family payment, 20% reduction in transport fees as well to try to help families uh, to deal with the current pressures. Uh, Minister Donoghue in the last two weeks brought forward uh, the reduction in excise on petrol uh, and on diesel in recognition of the extraordinary increases uh, in uh, prices that people are experiencing at the four courts uh, in recent weeks. So the government has made, in my view, uh, a genuine and a concerted effort to tackle this issue. Uh, that overall package, cost of living wise, is uh, close to €2 billion Euro, uh, at this point in time. In the, in the next number of weeks, led by Minister Donoghue, the Stability Programme update uh, will be published uh, by government, which will reset our economic and our fiscal forecasts, uh, taking account of uh, the prevailing conditions that we are currently experiencing. Like we are witnessing now a perfect storm in relation to inflation. Inflation was increasing, uh, coming out of the worst effects of COVID internationally, and that has been compounded now by the impact of uh, the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Uh, I want to assure you that the government is at one. Minister Donoghue, myself and the entire government collectively are at one in our determination to assist and support people at this time. That is why we have already taken a number of critical decisions. Uh, at this point, we have no immediate further plans uh, to introduce additional measures. But as is always the case, uh, the government will keep this issue under review. Uh, I acknowledge what you have said in relation to VAT, and I'm sure you will accept that we are governed by an EU VAT directive. Uh, the member states' national laws in respect to VAT have to be consistent with uh, the EU VAT directive. The Taoiseach, Minister Donoghue, uh, are directly engaging with the European Commission, President von der Leyen and her colleagues uh, to see what flexibilities there may be uh, in relation to options available to member states. You, and we expect to hear back from the Commission in that regard shortly. Deputy MacDonald. Minister, that's um, a, an extraordinary response and a very, very disappointing one. When you, when you say the government is at one on these matters, I can only assume that you are therefore reiterating the position of, of the finance minister that you have no plans to take further measures this side of October. And I have to tell you, whereas the state's economic and fiscal forecast needs to be reset this springtime, let me tell you, households' economic and fiscal realities have taken a battering. And it is simply unreal. It is not accepting the reality of the soaring inflationary crisis to suggest that you will sit this out for the next number of weeks <coughs> and months. That's not dealing with the reality, Minister. So I want to appeal to you again to move on this. We accept that the, the phenomenon is global. You, you don't have to keep repeating that. Nobody is placing the origins of this crisis at your feet, far from it. But there is an absolute immediate expectation that you will act now, not wait until October. You, That's not real. So again, on the issue of VAT, on the issue of removing excise from Thank home you, heating oil, Finals Minister. Off, Will you move on that? Move on these issues now and give people some small breathing space now. Thank you very now. much.
Minister. Uh, Deputy, I think through our actions to date, we have demonstrated that the government is agile and the government is responsive and the government is uh, constantly monitoring the evolving situation. We are experiencing an incredible amount of volatility and we have responded to date and we will keep the situation under review and con consider what our options are on an ongoing basis. But we also have to be honest with people and say we cannot, as a government, fully insulate the Irish economy, households and businesses from the economic fallout of the appalling war in Ukraine. And it would be disingenuous to suggest that we can. We've already made decisive steps uh, and, as I said, we'll keep the situation under review. But we also need consistency from you, Deputy. You came into the House here yesterday and called for the removal of VAT. On the very same day, uh, you put forward a motion in the Dáil calling for a reduction in VAT. And it's fine in opposition to be loose in your language and to suggest that the government can do things that it cannot do. You know well that the government does not have within its armoury at this point in time the ability to reduce or indeed to remove VAT. And you should be honest with people as well and not mislead them about the, uh, the options open to the government. Thanks, Councillor. Uh, uh,